Viewer discretion is advised. Your fave will be criticized. That's Shan. That's Chris. And welcome to CCTV, the nonstop pop show. And we'll be discussing the iconic Kylie Minogue and her iconic single, Slow. If you are wondering who we are, Chris and I have a huge range of experience in the music industry from performing on stage to working at record labels, so we have a lot of insight into this crazy music industry. And if you'd like to join our conversations like P.A. Lissette, be sure to follow us on Patreon.com slash Pops for exclusives and an opportunity to help write our future scripts. Now, back to Kylie. Yes. We have had a lot of great feedback from our past Kylie episodes. Uh, We have Mm -hmm. reviewed Disco Album and the Disco Guest List Edition. But it's time to throw it back to one of her most iconic tracks through her expansive career. We're going to talk about Slow today. So Slow was the lead single from Kylie's Body Language Album in 2003. And it was done by Kylie, Dan Carey, Emiliana Torini, and Sunny Rhodes. And the track hit number one in Australia and the UK and also hit the charts all over the world, including peaking at number 91 on the Billboard Hot 100, which that is very low, but at least it hit the Hot 100 because, you know, a lot of songs don't. So, yeah. Uh, But in the US, the track was nominated for Best Dance Recording at the 47th Grammy Awards. And Mm -hmm. she has consistently named the track as one of her favorites from her extensive discography. And I definitely agree. Um, Mm -hmm. So through the years, the song has been included in most of her tours and sounded different every time. So we're gonna go through and see all the different interpretations. And Mm -hmm. we have to shout out Steve Anderson for being her amazing music director that has worked (laughs) on her tour since the 90s because a lot of the credit does go to him for creating Mm -hmm. these amazing versions. So thank you for your work, Steve, because, oh man, (laughs) this is an awesome song and all the interpretations are different and interesting. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you hear me over here like... (laughs) (laughs) getting excited um so basically i heard slow um in the aphrodite tour right so i mean that was the concert that we watched during the quentin quarantino of 2020 so Mm. um you know i remember asking you what what song is this what song is this and you said it's slow it's good isn't it i said yeah it's great it's amazing um your confidence was peaking i was like oh yeah this, you know it's like you know when a fan shows you something and their fan is really proud of it mm-hmm. like you would have thought that you wrote the song um and honestly <laughs> i don't blame you i loved it i was like oh this is so good not a bad introduction but it did influence my experience with the original which i'll get into a little bit later um and it's but it's definitely a song that I look forward to when we watch her concerts. Um, all all four of them that we I've I've seen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we still have a few to go. I know. So more to give. I love it. Um, yeah. and you know, honestly, with this song, it's just like um one of our supporters have said before. It's not about reinventing the wheel, but as much as it is about keeping it spinning. And honey, as they say, I am spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man. Yeah, I actually remember. I mean, I've been a Kylie fan for a long time and I remember hearing Slow when it came out. I didn't really get it, you know, because she had uh... just released Light Years and Fever with Can't Get You Out of My Head and Love at First Sight. And it was all just very disco dance and happy pop. Yeah. And so this was a big switch up for her to do this kind of mm. more laid back synth pop electro clash kind of slightly yeah. R&B influenced pop. Mm. Um, but after a few listens, it uh, grew on me a lot and the album is really good it's underrated Mm -hmm. i think among her discography Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's one of my favorite tracks of hers i've even choreographed to it for this greek themed dance show that i that i did for like a sirens themed piece so yes i have a deep connection to this song and (laughs) let's get started with talking about the original version yes So the original is an 80s inspired synth pop minimalistic track and the iconic music video was shot at the Piscini, Piscini, Jesus Christ, I practiced this too because I was like, he's probably going to make me read this. (laughs) Piscina pool. I learned piscina because my teacher said don't piscina pool. Yeah. So I'm going to try it again. Yeah. She said that. Don't piscina pool. I was like, what? But you remember it. Okay. So. (laughs) 
the iconic music video was shot at the Piscina Municipal de Montejuic, that J-U-I-C, sorry y'all, yeah. um, swimming pool in <laughs> Barcelona, Spain. Yeah, yes. Barcelona. Thank you, Barcelona. Yes. Mm, this video, this song. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think it, it's interesting <laughs> listening back to it. It it is very yeah. understated for sure. I mm. love the way the synths kind of slowly layer in um, oh, and get oh, taken okay. away throughout the song as well. Kylie has described this push and pull effect um, mm-hmm. a lot when she talks about this song, mm-hmm. and and that totally makes sense because there's just just constant yeah. tension throughout. And that's mm-hmm. emphasized by that breathy delivery and kind of the different octave layers and and things oh, yeah. that get added in as the song continues. And then it all just gets a bit more frantic and aggressive by the end. And so it's just a really cool build. Yeah. What do I you agree. think? I agree. I, honestly, in the beginning, I will say after listening to the Aphrodite version, which is not this, yeah. I I came to this original production and I thought, eh, huh? Um, it's just being a newer fan and getting into her like in the past three years now, I have to say it reminded me of Percolator by Cashmere. Like, dun, 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 yes. Because of the very quirky, bubbly, poppy percussion of the synth. So at first, things like a, like a pattern, like a drum pattern, like a machine, almost yeah. kind of. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It's very yeah, similar. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's like a little drum machine. I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. So it took me time to warm up to it, honestly. Um, it, I, now I just feel like it's a, a club in space and not the jazz club that I got attached to, which is completely fine because now I'm like, beat me up, beam me up, Kylie. Okay, I'm here for it. I mm-hmm. liked it. I thought it was perfect, especially with the lyrics. The story is so fun to get into. Oh my gosh, talk about seduction. I knew you'd be here tonight, so I put my best dress on. I mean, how many of us haven't thought, okay, this person's gonna be here. I'm gonna be on my A game right now. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I love how you don't really know what's gonna what's gonna happen after the song, right? So it's like, you know, don't wanna rush it, you know, let the rhythm pull you in. And it's like, oof, you don't know if they messed around, but it's implied. <laughs> I mean, she definitely seduced. She definitely seduced this person. So yes, Kudos. she did say the lyrics were inspired by the idea that time and space change when you when there's mm. chemistry between you and someone else. Um, yeah. yeah, and so I love that as a story. And yeah, again, you can really feel that tension throughout. Um, mm. And the music video. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Well, first off, I'm going to Spain in a few weeks, so this was great timing oh! to watch this. Um, yeah. Not <laughs> yes. to Barcelona, but still Spain. Oh. Um, okay. So. But yeah. So <laughs> this video is just classic Kylie. It's simple. It's mm. sexy. Um, and even in a sea of very attractive, almost naked people, she still <laughs> shines. And you really only watch her yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's important. They were really extras. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> this little five two woman got y'all looking like y'all don't matter. <laughs> but I agree. I agree with you. I mean, um, a group of people writhing near a pool. Excuse me. I mean, for me, when I if I was a little bit younger and had if I had watched this video when it had come out, I would have been like, oh my god, oh my god. I think oh I god. was like that. I was thirteen, I think, and I was like, oh, yeah. this is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really it's really smexy you know all these people are just they are you know moving to the beat or maybe just laying there and it's so effective because it's casual and the only times they do move is when the pre-chorus comes in or with the refrain and nobody touched anyone which made it even more like touch like i (laughs) wanted them to do something (laughs) and it leads into the uh, all the lovers video when that's you know the orgy mountain yeah (laughs) yeah um yeah i agree kudos to michael rooney who was the choreographer he had also done can't get you out of my head for her oh Um, okay and yeah the kind of simple rolling around and just the changing of Mm -hmm. positions and the use of levels and and things it was so cool like it really Mm -hmm. was really well done um and yeah the direction as well was was awesome um i was reading about the video and kylie had said that she was squinting you know, the whole time, really, because the sun was beaming in her eyes the entire time. It wasn't an 
uh, yeah, it wasn't an intentional squint or smize, but it ended up really working because she was just like, really like, it like, yeah. Not in Destiny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those who can't see it, sorry, podcast listeners, I am lifting my leg up like Kyla, Kylie, excuse me. Yes. Um, that brings me back to my question of like, how long did this video take? Because they must have been bacon. They must oh, have been yeah. bacon in that sun. They look good though, so mm -hmm. kudos. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like you want that kind of sweaty glow as well, like for this, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah so it. for her, when she started performing the track, she was using these mm -hmm. neon beams a lot. Oh, and yes. so now whenever I... I see neon beams, I think of this song. <laughs> I don't blame you. And there was that EMA performance. I feel so bad for this one dancer. His his beam was not turning on. Yeah. I was like, damn, ain't nothing worth of being that one. Because it's not technically your fault, but it is, you know? Yes, props he, are scary. <laughs> they are. Mm -hmm. They are. But, but that performance really encompassed the whole atmosphere that this song created. It, I think this is one of the performances that were that was really true to the original music mm -hmm. video. Right. But I have to say, going forward, homegirl said, I'm going to switch it up, switch it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the next version we're going to talk about is the one from the Kylie X 2008 tour, which coincided with the X album. And so this whole era was a new wave, 80s inspired sound and, and kind of visual thing that she was going for. Mm -hmm. So Slow was mm -hmm. part of the Exposed Act. Um, during which she is dressed as, and I got this from Wikipedia. I don't know where they got this quote from, but they said she was dressed <laughs> as an erotic bellboy, which what? accurate. I got bison. I got bison from Street Fighter. Bison. Oh. Yeah, and bison, okay. yeah. I see that too. Yeah, I got that. Mashed with an erotic <laughs> bellboy. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, this version is really cool because it included an interpolation of Kylie's other song, Free, which was an unreleased song written in the 90s that she's performed live a few times, but has actually never been released. So it's kind of fun to have a treat for the fans, oh, yes. you know, that all know this song. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just a couple lines in there. And then that final chorus kind of goes oh, into yeah. this awesome mashup. So, yeah, what did you think yes. of this version? This is my other favorite Kylie tour. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I love Aphrodite, but I also liked X. Yeah, this is another one. I was like, oh my God, because she has the rhinestone skull. I forgot who designed the skull, but it yeah. was just awesome seeing her come down on it and then go through the songs before stopping here at Slow. And I was like, yes, this is the song that I loved. Uh, but I have to say, I like this version because it plays with the R&B thing that you were hinting toward. Like you said, it has a little bit of R&B in it. And I'm like, I don't hear no damn R&B, you know? So, <laughs> so because it is such a synth pop kind of moment, yeah. but this one really played with it because you can hear those those synth horn breaks slash mm -hmm. like record scratches. And yeah, even yeah. in the sound, yeah. yeah, it sound, it sounded a lot more like, oh, okay, where is this going to go? And then finally you figure out where it's going to go with the second chorus, with the drum pattern switching up to almost mm -hmm. like a hip hop inspired feel. And it felt really natural. It didn't feel like, you know, I'm a white lady trying to get down. And I really appreciate that. No tea, no shade. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it comes across as really, not even campy, just really cheesy. And I appreciate that uh, the, the musical arrangement really complemented A, the staging and then B just where the song's influences were come from coming from excuse me right. um and I love the guitar shred on the third refrain oh yes also shout out yeah. to the drummer because he was going off and those last choruses that whole mm -hmm. that whole last chorus was just so cool the build into that yeah. like I've gotten oh. so used to all she started kind of doing that in different ways right moving forward and so now when i listen mm -hmm. to the original version that last course almost doesn't build up to that huge right. moment the way that i want it to because i've gotten used to these live versions but i love how yeah. intense it gets for this one in particular mm -hmm. um yes. and yeah visually i agree love the giant skull i think the whole vibe of it there's something very sinister feeling about this whole mm -hmm. performance like she's telling us to do something bad like, like, like slow down and dance with me is like something you shouldn't do, but she wants you to do it. You yeah. know, I don't know. It's, yes. that's the vibe that I get from it. And I think that's cool. It's just totally. very atmospheric. Um, and I love the way they choreographed it. Um, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a lot of cool pictures. Like I love the diagonal 
um, that they oh, do gosh, yeah, kind of the... in the second verse and then the squat into the, yeah, 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 into, yeah. The, <laughs> into the sway. sway. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Just again, just a lot of tension. I mean, I think this whole song is about tension in different ways and that is explored in different ways with all these different versions. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yes. love this version and love this tour. I would love to actually just do a whole episode just on this tour. My ex, heck yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yes! and the album. The album's to... great too. Oh man! Ah, yes. I get so excited because literally, again, because I'm new, I have like this excitement. Um, you're settled into your fandom, but you still are mm-hmm. excited as well. So it's uh, nice yes. to really share this with you. Um, I agree with you with the whole sinister thing, especially because of the dancing. Um, the dancers, excuse me, they were dressed like uh, almost like BDSM enforcers or like a football yeah. team. I can't really. It was just very like the masks gave me team, but the. <laughs> But the body suits and whatnot gave me very much like, you know, sub dom and I'm here for it. We're uh-huh. here for it. But oh, yeah. I really like this performance as well because the choreography is a lot more sharper because of the the record scratch or like the horn breaks. And even because of the drums, there's a nice balance of uh how you say feminine and masculine. And I think this Ooh. is the most uh the most balanced one out of all the ones we've seen. Um we'll we'll, we'll talk about it's the most balanced because you have the feminine motions with the women dancing usually but the guys were there too so it just made it even more like stronger and more like oh yeah yes mistress you know so <laughs> i was yes. here for it yes so and shout out it. to pop justice i did kind of just ask oh. the forum what they thought of their favorite versions of slow and this one was shouted out a lot um i think mm. fans have a general love for the free the song free anyway so i think mm-hmm. that interpolated with slow was just like everything because it was awesome, want. honestly. Yeah. After I listen, I listened to it. I, I, fans, good choice, good choice. Um, it's mm-hmm. powerful. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then she would then go on to do something completely different because for her yeah. 25th anniversary, she ended up doing an Abbey Road album, which is essentially like an orchestral version slash mm-hmm. just reinterpretation of her singles. And Slow was included, and this time she turned it into a sultry jazz version. Uh, very <laughs> different vibe. And she also had done a similar version on the Aphrodite tour in 2011, a few, a year before that. Um, that one was a little, yeah, a little different, but same kind of vibe. So what did you think of now the jazzy version? I guess this was the first version that you heard, like you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And me being a little bit of a, I'm not a jazz head per se, but I have, um, you know, I just like jazz. So I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, this is right up my alley. This is nice. Um, and again, like I said, watching it being performed the way it was on the Aphrodite tour, I was definitely blown away because, you know, here we are in Greece and then suddenly we're in a jazz club in the middle of, um, you know, <laughs> in Athens. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Um, it definitely reminded me of like, Why Don't You Do Right? or even Harlem Nocturne by Duke Ellington. Um, I mean, I was like, honey, Jessica Rabbit, who? Mm-hmm. Who? You know, uh, it was very slinky, very sensual. And I think that's what made it so interesting to me, the production. I love that saxophone because you don't hear a good sax solo anymore. Mm -hmm. That's not like used for like 80s or something. Like people use it kind of, you know, get a little Kenny G moment. But she was like, let me take you back. Let me take you all the way back into a smoky club. You know, everyone's drinking their scotch or whiskey or whatever people drunk back in the day. Um, <laughs> and I love that there are so many horned instruments. There's trumpets being used to punctuate a lot of the movements in the choreo for emphasis. So it just, again, it makes you feel like a club in Greece, like a jazz club, which is interesting because yeah. how in the world do you get jazz in Greece and put them together? And at this point, she breaks rules. There is no standard with her. It's like, I do what I want to do when I want to do it. And it comes out like this. And I'm like, Whoa. yeah. I mean, with you Kylie, know? I think there's always been a showgirl element to her. I mean, that's why she yeah, named her totally. greatest hits tour, the showgirl tour, right? Showgirl tour. So <laughs> it makes sense. She's always, there's always a Vegasy element, I think, in there in her show. So yeah. this was that yeah. moment for the Aphrodite tour. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think it, it was really cool. It was very playful. Um, The Abbey Road version that she ended up doing was a little less playful. It was a little, Mm -hmm. it was still very sultry, but yeah, just not as Vegas-y, I guess. Um, But that one had a really cool bass line that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, back to the Aphrodite tour version, that wheel slowly 
turning up. Oh man, what a cool moment. That's what sold it. I, yeah, because this it tour me. was just paced so well. Like just when you think yeah. you've seen all that stage can do, she will bring right. something new to it. And this is just one of those moments where it's like you had that wheel right. was sitting there the whole time, but you had no idea that it could mm-hmm. do that. So, yes. oh man, just so cool. Impressive. Love how creative the dancers were with the fans and their mouths and the mm-hmm. ripples. And oh <laughs> yes. man, very, very cool. You read but my mind. You just when you mind. think that the song is over, it does seek into the Chemical Brothers remix for that final mm, chorus mm. to turn it into the full dance pop moment. Yes. Oh, electric man, cool sex moment. romp. Yes. It's an electric sex romp, like Grease at a rave. Like this is mm-hmm. true Grease. <laughs> Grecian behavior. <laughs> Ancient yes. Grecian behavior. Yeah. Oh, love that Oh, man. Part. And Let's shout out to the Chemical Brothers remix in general. Oh, yeah. Because it's really cool. That was on the single... Um, a really cool version on its own. She did perform it in a fuller form at like some paid gig in Shanghai that I found on YouTube. I had actually never seen that before, but it was really cool. With the the heads. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God, boy. I I mean, she's known for the visor, you know, can't get you out of my head. I know, but the pointy visor, I feel like I was watching like a a, a Digimon. Like there's a Digimon. I forgot <laughs> what season it is. That is literally um, I think it's Izzy's Digimon from the first season. His 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 Digimon <laughs> turns into like a drill thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Iconic <laughs> silhouettes, but very mm-hmm. strange. I'm just gonna say that. That's all Yes. That's yes. <laughs> and then when she did when she did slow on the Kiss Me Once tour, that ended up building mm-hmm. up into the Chemical Brothers remix yet again oh, as yes. well. I actually love that version. I actually listened to that version more than the original. Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, and okay. I actually made my own version kind of based off of that version for when I choreographed. We oh, choreographed. It. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, cool. I ended up making my own little remix Sieg. So, Yeah. Just awesome, awesome interpretation of it in general. Mm -hmm. And just cool to see how a song, you can just change, you know, some few melodical choices and you Mm -hmm. can just give it an entirely different vibe, which is so cool. Um, Indeed, I agree with you with that one, for sure. Yeah. And up next, Mm -hmm. would be the Golden Tour, which is really strange for me because I'm going to let you kind of like lead us into it because I know nothing about this era. As yeah, I'm we haven't learning. seen, you haven't seen this tour yet, right? Not yet, or even Ooh, listen to the to country version of her. I know. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Assignments. <laughs> but continue, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Um. yeah, so the golden tour was Kylie's country moment. I mean, as country mm-hmm. as Kylie could go. So it was still like country disco, you know? Um, <laughs> um, so in this tour, there was a biker rally section and slow oh. was the start of that and steve made a version that mashed it up with human leagues being boiled which is a synth pop track from 1978 and mm-hmm. this is another one that the fans love like people were mm-hmm. so so excited about this version when she did it and i think it's because there's just such a cool it was such a cool factor that was added to it Mm-hmm. Yeah. mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I was I was going to, I was trying Go to for it. comment. I was like, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this sounds like something that John Carpenter would have created if he was making pop. Mm. For those who don't know, John Carpenter is, you know, he is basically a wizard of synthwave. Um, Godfather, if you want to go there. Uh, but yeah, he's he's created the iconic Halloween theme. And we all know it doesn't just sound like a, it doesn't just sound creepy. It almost sounds cool. It sounds like, if, if, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pop dancing for those who can't see. But yeah, it just sounded like something John Carpenter would have just, oh, if he made pop music, which is great because I do enjoy synth wave. Um, so this version is definitely welcomed. And I enjoy country music. I do. But again, because this whole concert was kind of focused on the country disco thing, mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, you have acoustic, electric, but this is very digital like he has electric but it's digital sounding Mm -hmm. and i mean at this point again like i said she's gone everywhere and back with concerts especially like with x so staging changes at the snap of her fingers which is awesome because i mean when you're on a road trip even a golden road trip you can end up at 
a biker bar, right? Oh yeah. I mean, those are common in the country. So exactly. That's what makes it almost just like, wow, the thought process that went into the creative direction because you run into the lovers gang, like get out of mm-hmm. here, the lovers. And they're all, I feel like I was like walking in on a smecky, smecky moment, you know, in the club and Kylie walks in and she's like, who's going to be my, you know, who, who, something about it just felt very like, I feel like I was watching something I shouldn't have been. It wasn't mm. too sexy, but you could see that everyone was, all the dancers were staged in a way where they were already in the midst of something. It yes. wasn't like they were riding bikes, they were chilling and she walked in like, oh. And again, with nice. the tension building, cause this was the first song yeah. of that section, you know, they're mm-hmm. about to do something big after that, you know, right. like they're all just mostly just kind of posing and like smizing yeah. out at the camera or at the audience, yeah. you know, during most of uh-huh. it. And you just know they're like slowly getting up and changing positions and things. So yeah, it was a good kind mm-hmm. of start to, I think it was like the second half of the concert. This is, this is mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. how it started. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I think I also love how this version completely pulls back its production after the take it down, down. Because the other yeah. ones before this, oh, that's oh, been the oh. build up. Yeah. And yeah. then this time she did the complete opposite, which is fun. Cause like, you know, she's going to build it up for the last chorus. So it was just fun to see her right. do that, you know, something different. Right. And that's the type Guys. of roller coaster that you want, right? Like yeah. in a concert, mm-hmm. especially such a long concert, she does a full, you know, two plus hour show. You need yeah. these roller coaster moments to kind of keep your interest. So again, mm-hmm. kudos to all the creative directors and Steve, cause you guys yeah. know how to arrange a concert for sure. Um, yeah, super clever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this would not be the end of the mashups though, because the next few versions are all different types of mashups and interpolation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So uh, in the summer of 2019, Kylie was finally invited back to do Glastonbury, um, which for those of you who don't know, that's pretty much the most iconic music festival you could do in the UK. And it is a, an mm-hmm. extreme honor to get invited to do it. And she headlined one of the big stages as well and holds the record now for the most viewed Glastonbury set ever in the UK. Um, you haven't <laughs> seen the Glastonbury set yet either. We need to do that too. No. I oh my I gosh. Know. Okay, don't worry. We're going to do this. We're going to do all of it. But anyway, so she had actually been invited back in 2005, but had to cancel mm-hmm. due to her breast cancer diagnosis. So it's great that she was finally invited back. And with that, she kind of went on a greatest hits tour of sorts in the summer of 2019. Mm-hmm. And for this tour, Steve created a mashup with David Bowie's 1980 single fashion, which is just such a great idea. Um, I did a poll on Facebook and this definitely seems to be the fan favorite version along with the infinite disco one that we'll talk about. But yeah, these two, these two got the most votes. Yeah. I think it's awesome. David Bowie, obviously iconic. Um, I can't say that I'm like a huge fan, but I know certain songs like this one. I mean, this one has a funky arrangement and like this really jarring riff. I sound stupid every single time I try to make fun of, (laughs) make a sound. I mean, a guitar is hard. (laughs) <laughs> to ah. emulate yeah thank you. thank you y'all i've been indemnified mm. um so but yeah it's very jarring uh david's version of uh, my version his the original his song yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this one actually gave kylie a cool edge mm-hmm. it definitely made it less i mean i want to say it's not as sexy but it it doesn't feel as tentative where it's just like well i wore it because i thought you'd be here i knew you'd be here so i wore it Mm-hmm. what you're gonna do you know something about it feels very authoritative but not as like dominating as the x one <laughs> yes <laughs> which is fun and i think the present the rendition made the presentation so much more fascinating to watch especially with like the clock ticking and the chiming yes in the beginning um but what did you think about it overall because i mean you've heard it so many times and you heard yeah. it before i have so um yeah i think it's interesting i think it was a great idea to mash this up yeah. with a a popular song, especially when you're doing festivals, 
you know, you mm-hmm. want elements mm-hmm. in there that everyone will know, even if the fan, even if there are people there that don't know Kylie as well. I think this song is, right. is, is one of his biggest songs, you know, so you'll at least recognize the guitar riff. Also, it's about live music. So having a version that's more rock influenced also makes sense in that setting. And she has a great band. So be, to be able to now use them kind of at their full capacity is great. And I love Rock Kylie. There's been little elements of Rock Kylie through her career. Um, so bringing that back is exciting for me. Um, so yeah, yes. I think the guitar riffs are, are super iconic. I think, like you said, it just gives a different energy, more powerful, cooler. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought the staging was super effective for the visual as well. Mm-hmm. Just on a platform mm-hmm. with a mic stand and the dancers, they're kind of confused. They're kind of just like posing behind her with like little yeah, yeah. bits of crazy choreo. Um, <laughs> and I guess that makes sense. I didn't think of the kind of the whole them being workers i guess like, like factory workers yeah, yeah, yeah factory yeah. i see know, that like, now i didn't fully get yeah. it i was like are they in jail <laughs> they could be you in jail me. being forced to work in a factory that's what i'm saying you know me yeah. like license plate printing who knows you know me i'm always about the uh the chance conspiracies always trying to figure out what what's the meaning and she behind? always does have a meaning though so <laughs> oh okay yeah see? yeah we I'm need to watch the glass and me, set too because it was good Mm-hmm. I, I think the whole workers in the jail thing that could be combined because they seem very confused but also very much like in a rut it's like what oh oh and they start to come in little by little so it doesn't feel so much like a factory as much as it just feels like them coming out of their cells <laughs> 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 um and as for uh choreography I think this one is 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 another one that I like because the the movements are more modern and not so interpretive. I think with Kylie's choreography and choreographer, I've noticed that there's a lot of, you know, you know, just some, it's not bad, but sometimes I'm like, oh, what's happening? Very Especially just contemporary more- interpretive dancing. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Like there, what performance was it when there was a B-boy with her? Oh, that was in the Kiss Me One store. Yeah, yeah. Because Exactly, the Kiss Me One store. Yeah, and he's in her B-boy. I was like, okay, I get that part, but then he started doing some, and I was like, Okay, I get it, but this is not my favorite kind of presentation of it. Right. It's just him, so it doesn't feel as it doesn't have that same visual that the original music video had, where it's a bunch of people, and then yes, later yes, on yes. with all these other you know interpretations of it. But yeah, I really like this one. Uh, it's modern chest pops, body rolls, and the like, transitions brought along by walk by walking, like mm-hmm. nothing too crazy, and everyone's like welcoming the call to action that is declared by Kylie. So again, this one I like too. And mm-hmm. I like the little booty roll moment she has at the end. Yes. So yeah, I like this. Yes. She's Great known stuff. for her booty rolls. Come on, girl. She's yeah. good at it. For someone who doesn't <laughs> dance, she for someone who does not dance, I've yeah. watched so many different performances. She does what needs to be done. I think oh, yeah. she went low at one point in the uh, Kiss Me Once tour. And I was like, what happened to her ankle? She was getting ready to go on her knees. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Uh, <laughs> and she points her feet. That's just details. That's mm-hmm. it. Oh yeah. That's it. That's oh it. yeah. All right. So the final version that we're going to talk about is the Infinite Disco version from 2020. Disco. Yes, because with the <laughs> pandemic underway, Kylie had yeah. to do a virtual concert to promote the disco album. And it ended up being the best virtual concert out of all the ones that I saw. And I saw a lot. Um, the West it ones, was yeah. so good. Oh, man. And yeah. <laughs> um, Steve created yet another iconic mashup for Slow, this time with Donna Summer's Love to Love You, Baby. And again, like I said, this was a huge hit with the fans. Everyone still talks about it. Everyone still listens to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. What about you? I know you love disco. You're like that's that's. This oh, I still listen wheelhouse. to this version a lot too. <laughs> oh man, I'm so glad they posted this one officially on YouTube. Right. So it's easily accessible. Right. I do have the version of disco somewhere that has the CD with the audio, yes. but still, this should really be on streaming. Yes. But uh, yeah, I, Steve, excuse me. First of all, if you're going to do something like this, warn somebody because. Uh, Again, if this woman was not a white lady, a tiny white lady from Australia, I think she'd be black famous. I said this in our other video, our disco video, the original. It's just fun. It's sexy. Like, oh, and on top of that, as old as she is, not even trying to be funny, she is an older woman. She looks good and she sounds good. And she makes people who are either young or old be like, yo, I want to get like that or, oh, I want to be that right now. So it's undeniable. It's really good. I like this one. Yeah, I think it's funny when we had reviewed disco 
back in mm-hmm. 2020 now. Wow. Yeah, um, wow. I had said <laughs> the only thing I felt was missing from that album was this kind of more sultry yes. disco because we knew that she could do it. And so this version of Slow gives me everything that I wanted mm-hmm. from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the funky guitar, the drawn out disco synths, that classic kind of 16 beat drum pattern. And yeah, then finally, yeah. Kylie does sing like the iconic love to love you baby line as well. So everything about it is just perfect. Like, I think this is just such a great example of how you can interpret your old songs to match your current concepts, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this one made sense. Again, uh-huh. it's, I've, I've seen, I cannot reference one right now, but I have seen moments in performances where I was just like, wow, would y'all put these two songs together? It doesn't make any sense. Or I just see other people dancing or covering a mm-hmm. song, and I'm like, why would you do this? It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Just to either be relevant or come across as edgy or cool, whatever. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. This made sense. Even with the moans. The ooh and the ah. Yes. She goes, yeah. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, it, Honestly, in the staging, again, it was simple because it is a disco, but I loved it. It was like a simple spotlight in the beginning, a ladies' night moment with the sensual yes. hip sways and the other female dancers. It gave me a Saturday night fever, all puns intended. Okay. Yes. And again, she became Kylie Summer. This woman is great. That's it. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Visually, it was really cool. I agree. I love the simple hip rolling and swaying. Honestly, I think because we've been watching so much K-pop where we had said at the past where it just fits a lot. Oh, this is God, an yeah. example of how you can do something super simple, but still be very visually interesting and effective. Yeah. Even the camera yeah. work was great. I mean, they were yeah. going close to her, showing the dancers, mm-hmm. just really when she was moving, they're all swaying in the deep plie and yes. like, you know, second position. Yes. And they're sitting there moving their hips. They zoom into her little booty in the gold yes. suit. And I was like, oh my God, just the right amount without, I didn't even see her face. All I saw was this little teeny tiny booty cheek. And I was like, wow, I'm shook. So it's just fun because it doesn't feel like I'm watching her, just watching her. It feels like I'm part of it. It feels like I'm in there. I feel like I'm at the club disco yes. with her, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, I enjoyed it. Nice. Yes. Oh man. So let's do a little vote. What's your favorite oh. arrangement of the ones we have discussed? Okay. So I think the one I liked the most was definitely the X arrangement. Mm-hmm. Um because it does have rock, it does have R and B, and it sounds like synth. So that's all the things that I like all in one. I am not mad at that at all. What about you? What arrangement do you like? I'm curious. I was gonna say that too, actually. Um, the interpolation with Earth? free, because I think yeah. the way I love how intense that final chorus is. I think it's so cool. I think second to that is the Kiss Me Once tour version with the Chemical Brothers mm. remix kind of seeged in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 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 again, kind of for the same reason. Um, it's more of a rave dance kind of intensity <laughs> instead of the rock intensity of free. But yeah. Um, yeah, those are probably my top two. Okay, my my second my second fave is definitely uh, Aphrodite. But once I saw okay. X, I was like, sorry, goddess, you gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, the X for sure. But what about uh, like staging, production, like maybe even choreography? Which one was your overall favorite yeah visually i have to give it to aphrodite tour i do a so- i do have a soft spot for it because i did see the tour in la they didn't have the wheel there because the oh. stage was oh. i don't know the hollywood bowl is also like a really small stage so she couldn't even put mm-hmm. her full like pillar thing there but they <laughs> did it on the stairs instead like the fan thing nice. and it still was really really nice. cool so then when i got to see the full version um on the filmed version, I was even yeah. more blown away. Um, and I think, <laughs> yeah, I think the build of that is just so cool um, with it kind of mm-hmm. going from this kind of vegas sultry thing to the Grease dance rave thing that you said. Um, <laughs> yeah, how about you? Visually, what was your favorite performance? Okay, so the EMAs I do like because of little details, like I said, with her getting ready to get on her knee and like literally beveling. And I was like, wow, that little detail I love. And then the red lights, but I got a DACA point because Mr. forgot his light. Um, no, totally it could have been broken. Now, <laughs> I know, I was totally teasing. I'm, I'm so sorry, honey. If, you, if we ever cross paths, if you ever see this, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but I have to say, I think... Uh, staging i also agree with you aphrodite definitely took the cake i mean 
I, up until this point, I've seen a lot of concerts, and I've never seen anything quite like that. And even Beyonce copies her a little bit. So, I mean. <laughs> mm, we could do a whole we video about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> love um, you, V. Love you, V. But Kylie is a trendsetter, <laughs> and this is one of those things I've not seen anyone else do. Or if they tried it, they, it didn't look like this. Mm-hmm. In the ladies. Yeah. So yeah, Aphrodite. <laughs> yes. All right. So after all these years, I have to say, and even just from today prepping for this episode, I just listened to slow like 50 times. And I'm still not sick right. of it. It's <laughs> that good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, obviously it's great because all these various reinventions are interesting. You know, even in mm-hmm. the versions on tour that were closer to the original version, there were still little added sounds, you know, and little added oh, elements yeah. to it that that Steve yeah. added. Um, so yeah, all you pop stars out there, you need to learn from Miss Kylie Minogue on how to keep things fresh. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Um, so how about you? Any overall thoughts? And do you have any ideas for other interpolations or mashups or anything or, or vibes that you would want for this song in the future? No, honestly, I would love a nice little R&B version, but not modern R&B. At this point, oh. I would take something like a little, you know, not like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> modern R&B is just, there's no melody. Questionable. Like, what is right happening? Yeah. 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 But, oh, wow. That was... <laughs> Again, it's another another day for that one. Yes. But uh, but yeah, no, I would love to hear her do something like the way chocolate was. How how warm that one. I want something a little bit less electronic Ooh, and synthy. I want some maybe not mash it up, but definitely something along that line where it's just like, ooh, okay, where's this going? She can do anything with this damn song at this point. Like I said, there hasn't been any change melodically really, which means whatever you do with the the rest of the the um. The production, whatever you do with the rest of the production, has to come correct because she's doing her job. She showed up. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I'm a new fan, so I don't have any other like things in my mind, like catalog wise, of what she can mix up with this song. Yeah, but I'm sure you do. Tell us. Yeah, what, well, what so first mind? off, a shout out to a Pop Justice poster, I'd Rather Jack, mm-hmm. who also shared mm-hmm. a version with me where it was mashed up with Electric Sixes, Danger, High Voltage, Soul Child, Twelve Inch Blitz Mix. <laughs> That's a long title. <laughs> um, and yeah, he sent that to me. It's really cool. It's like a full yeah. kind of disco remix version, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but that would be awesome. I think if she, if she wanted to go maybe the opposite of what you were saying and go extreme high energy with it, Aww, that would be a yeah. really cool idea. So definitely go check that out. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, if we were mashing it up with one of her own tracks, kind of like how she did with mm-hmm. Free, she has this song called Skirt that's from the kind of kiss me once rock nation era and it was kind of it was like a dubstep house track mm-hmm. and, and and she you, kind of you think i think it could totally think, work i think that song is, is another one that has this kind of tension it's a little it's a little more energy than slow um okay it's yeah. a very strong bass that kind of pulses through it. Oh, uh, yeah. But I think that'd be fun. I think putting that in after the take it down, down into a, like a chorus of skirt in back into slow, fun. I think could really, really work. Um, and that song deserves its attention, more Some attention, love. because <laughs> she included it as like a video interlude. I think she's only performed it like once in like Hong Kong or like some private gig, and no one's oh. ever seen it. So that song the light deserves to come back um but yeah i can't wait to see what she does because yeah. clearly clearly she loves the song we love the song she even performed it at the fashion awards last year oh, yes um and yes. she did the love to love you baby version yeah yeah, yeah yeah so you know i'm excited that wasn't to see... enough though oh no not at all i'm excited to see yeah. what she does with the song moving forward it, for sure indeed indeed i agree i agree so, with all that being said, lovers, what do you all think about the track slow? And what is your favorite version? Be- feel free to like really separate it from production to performance or maybe combine them, whatever you want. The world of you is your oyster, obviously, and Kylie is obviously the pearl, okay? And let us know your thoughts in the comments below or message us at CCTV Pops on all social media. And you can now follow us on Patreon because we'd love to hear all of your thoughts and you can help us decide our next episode topics. So if you want some more of that Kylie action that we already don't have planned, um, Feel free to tell us <laughs> and be free <laughs> and be sure to give us a like subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for our listeners give us a rating and a review on your podcast platform of choice until next time that's chris that's Shan, and we are cctv 
slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.